Hey everyone, we're gonna see how to bundle assets into our Go application. So bundle these assets, whether they be images or something else, directly in the Go binary. So a popular example, or at least one that I think is pretty cool, is Minio, which is an S3 alternative. So AWS S3 alternative. What happens is when you run this application, which is built with Go, uh, it actually serves a web application, so that way you have a web interface to use. Uh, this is just one of many possible examples of where bundling might be useful, um, but it, it's kind of going to be the basis of this example today. So I'm going to bundle a web application or a website into our Go binary when we build it. So that way, when I pass around the binary file, uh, people can actually access the website directly. Um, so you'll see on my screen, I do have a website already created because the, the purpose of this particular tutorial was not around website design. So I do have an index.html file. I have a CSS file and I have a, a JavaScript file. Um, and this is inside of a website directory um, on my computer. Conveniently, it is inside of my Go path. It doesn't need to be, um, but just, just make sure that you have your, your assets inside of their own directory. Um, so external from this main.go file that I have next to it. Um, so just to show you what the website would look like, I can go to my web browser. Um, this is what it would look like if I were to access it directly from the file system, but we're gonna access it directly through the Go binary. So let's go back into the code. Um, we will actually, before we go back into the code, we will need a few uh, packages to install. Um, so what's, what we're gonna be using to make this possible is a package called Go Rice. So there are other alternatives, alternatives when it comes to packaging your Go assets. Um, but Rice has been a successful one in my opinion. I found it very easy to use. Um, so that's why I'm going to show it here. So what you do need to do is you need to run go get on these two um, command line uh, commands. So you, you need to get these two packages. So just copy them over into your terminal um, and then, oops, and then uh, actually just run them. Um, so I actually do have both of them already. Um, so we won't worry about that, but just again, let me go back to my web browser. You do want to install both of these. So go get uh, and then GitHub Gert Joan, go.rice. Um, and then likewise, you want to get the, the rice tool inside of that as well. Um, so again, those two, those two are a necessity to get this to be successful. Um, a third package that we will be using, it's not an absolute necessity, but it, it's something that I use all the time when it comes to building web applications with Go is we want the Gorilla Mux library. Um, so if I actually Google it, it's actually uh, Gorilla Mux. And I'll, I'll open it up on GitHub here. Um, so you want this package as well. Um, so to install it, uh, you can just say go get github.com slash gorilla slash mux. Um, and not necessary because uh, you, you can always just use the, the native Go network packages. Um, but I, I do find it a little easier. All right, so with that out of the way, uh, let's go into our Go file. Uh, we're actually going to take care of business here. So I do have kind of just the, the foundation of, of this Go application. Uh, we're gonna do the following inside of our main function. And you'll notice that packages are imported as we uh, use them. Uh, this is just the nature of my Visual Studio code and the uh, plugins that I have installed. So I'm gonna say router equals mux.newrouter. I'm going to say, this is where it's important. Um, I'll actually, I'm just going to say uh, HTTP dot listen and serve. And I'm going to serve it on port one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to pass in that router. Um, so this is where it's going to get um, important. It comes down to how we use uh, the rice package. So what we want to say is we want to define the path to access um, a particular file. And this file is going to be our packaged what we're going to call it a, a rice box. So we're going to say router dot path prefix. Um, it's going to be the root path. So uh, when we when we launch our web browser at localhost one two three four five or wherever it's hosted at, it's going to be the root path. Uh, we have a handler. So what happens when it's actually called? So what what kind of logic is going to be applied? Uh, we're going to say http dot file server. Um, so we're going to use the go file server. Um, and it's going to use um, it's going to use rice, so it's going to it's not going to run it directly, but but you'll see what happens in the next step. Um, we're going to say rice dot must find box. We're going to pass in that website directory, and then what we're going to do is outside of that, we're going to say dot http 
box. Um, so what's going to happen here is when we compile and, or transpile or whatever you want to call it, when we when we convert our website into a Go asset, um, it, when we run the command, it's going to look at this code. So this this line 12, it's going to look at the website directory based on what we have here, must find box, and it's going to bundle all of the assets for us. Um, so what you'll want to do is uh, when, when we installed the Go Rice package, we want to make sure that it's in our path on our system. Um, so we can say echo and then we can say path. Um, in my case, the, the binary directory, the bin directory is in my path. If you haven't done so, make sure it's already in your path because we're going to run a command from that, from that particular directory. So we're going to say the following. So we're going to say rice. Um, and just to see what rice offers, um, it, it offers a variety of commands. We're going to say rice embed. So let me clear this. Rice embed go. So what that did is, again, it looked at this must find box command, uh, which says, you know, we're going to be using website, the directory website. So it went and it packaged everything that was inside of that website directory. Um, and it created a ricebox.go file. Um, so if I open that file, it looks something like this. And it just includes uh, basically every, all of the string data. If, it, if there was image data, it would be included as well. Um, so that way we can actually just use this go file. Um, so it's on, it's kind of irrelevant for us to actually look at this file because it's we, we can trust that it's already built for us. But we go to main.go again. Uh, when we now build our application, uh, this command is going to look for the, the rice box. Um, so we're going to say go build. It's going to create our binary. In this case, uh, it's called rbox for us. Um, so I'm going to say I'm just going to run it rbox. So this is running the application that we had just uh, built. I'm going to go back to the browser. I'm going to say localhost 12345. Um, and this time around, it, it looks like it didn't print out the text. Uh, let's figure out why. It looks like it errored out um, because I accidentally pasted it in and I didn't, I didn't undo it. Um, so let's erase uh, what I accidentally pasted into my app.js file. We're going to run the, the, the ricebox command again. So I'm going to say rice embed go. Um, it should have created a new file. I'm going to say um, go build. And then I'm going to run the command again. So it's running. I go back to my web browser. I refresh and it's there. So this is this is bundled into my, my binary file. Um, so I could pass this binary file around and everyone would get the same experience that I just demonstrated in my web browser. Um, so, so pretty cool stuff. Um, this is useful. Like I said, if you want to add some kind of user interface for your applications that are built with Go, um, so that way you could just build a web application and uh, access j different features and functionality of your Go application uh, through HTTP. Um, so it's very cool stuff.